It's Jen Suzuki, and I'm in the industry. I meet some of the greatest leaders out there, dealer execs, dealers, GMs, and I'm bringing them in the studio to talk to me about what's making their business pop, what's accelerating their growth. I'm sharing my own personal strategies for your sales team, so I'm ready to get after it. Are you? Dealers and managers that are listening today, today is all about learning about an edge, an edge, and who doesn't need that, in buying inventory. What's up? And welcome, my friends. We've got John McAdams, who holds a very impressive resume. Check him out on LinkedIn. He's well-rounded, got a huge background between digital training, digital marketing. He's the VP of Social Dealer. And... Drum roll, my long-term buddy, Jeff Clark, president of Social Dealer, is with us today. I've worked with him for at least a decade. Welcome, you guys. Hey, thanks. Hey, hey thanks what, for, up, what up? Thanks for having us. <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> so fun. Um, I, I've actually really been looking forward to this myself because this, this is an opportunity for our listeners to learn from subject matter experts such as yourselves, industry experts on social media. And this is an area that I'm pumped about because I haven't had this opportunity to have this topic on my show, but I feel like you guys have something up your sleeve that, you know, is going to really interest our listeners. You guys have been in the game for some time. You see a lot of change and you've been in the social media game. You're always ready to change. You got to move quickly. Most of us want to keep up, stay relevant, stay in the mindset of growth. How do you stay on top of it all, John? Yeah, you know, uh, well, first, you know, thanks for having us on, Jennifer. I, I really pleasure. appreciate it. You know, um, obviously, you've got a great following, and you know, I'm a I'm a big person who's into 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 mentorship, into yeah. training um, dealers, right? So, obviously, my background, you know, a highly retail, right? I've been doing this 25, you know, 26, 27 years. I, I kind of lost track after a while. Um, I've sold cars as GSM, was a general manager for multiple rooftops, director of e-commerce. Um, so I think uh, I think that pedigree, you know, allows me or affords me the ability to really help dealers out greatly, um, you know. And for us at Social Dealer, yes, we've been here for 13, going on 14 years now. Wow! Really helping wow. dealers, you know, sell and service more cars profitably by using social media. But you know, the, the the when Jeff and I talk, we have these executive meetings and we have discussions with dealers. We like to talk about tip of the spear. Right. So we always want to be tip of the spear. We want to lead the way, lead the charge. Right. Um, Because at the end of the day, dealers are very aggressive. They're very competitive. I was as a general manager, I was very aggressive, very competitive. I'm that way today. Right. And I always want to win. I want to win. I want to win. I want to win. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, what our dealer clients and dealer partners are looking for as well. So when it comes to being tip of the spear, we always want to be forefront, right? So, you know, whether that's Facebook or Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram or Pinterest, you know, there's so many channels out there and dealers will say, well, John, which one do I do? And I sit back and I think, and it's, it's never just one channel, No. right? I mean, no. it, you know, if you're looking for a particular audience, that might be Facebook and, and Instagram, it might be Pinterest, it might be Snapchat, it might be TikTok, it might be YouTube, Right. So we always are trying to be tip of the spear with all of our solutions to dealers. And 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 each one of those outlets has a different audience. Yeah, um, so 100%. Honestly, that's probably the best way to put it, right? There's a lot of ways to say it, but the, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if you're looking for a particular demographic of audience, choose the right channel, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. if you're looking for one particular set of audience, choose Pinterest, for example. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a different segment or demographic of the audience, Choose TikTok or yeah. Snapchat or Instagram or Pinterest, right? So I think I think it's important that dealers understand that there's more than one channel. There's more one, more than one way to get to the end result, right? So it's not like a single path of highway. You can't just get on one highway and get to where you want to get to. You have to look at all the channels that get there, right? So Snapchat, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's what I love best about working with dealers is, Coming up, coming up with customized strategies uh-huh. that fit their stores yep. or their store to get to where they want to go. That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, I I do all those channels, but mostly a lot of consuming. <laughs> but I see a lot of clever dealerships and salespeople on TikTok now, and the amount of views and comments they get is just 
a hundred thousand X <laughs> than I've yeah. ever seen anyone get on Instagram. You know, yeah. I think yeah. like TikTok is such a huge emerging outlet. It's been around a while, but I see a lot of salespeople, and a lot of stores on there now. Is that effective? You, you know, it's, you know, it's funny, Jennifer. Can you get car is, buyers uh, off of TikTok? Well, yeah, you know what? Well, <laughs> listen, you know, the podcast is called, that we have is called, but does it sell cars, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, social media does do that, right? I was literally in Seattle last week with a, with a, a, a nice dealer group. And, and literally, you know, when I said TikTok, they all kind of, all the GMs kind of looked away. They're like, oh, goodness, TikTok, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's not just Facebook. It's not just Instagram. It's not just Pinterest. It's not just LinkedIn. It's just not Twitter. It's all of those channels together, right? So, for example, if you said to me, Jennifer, hey, John, I want to speak to all the female social media users driving my particular brand within 10 miles of my store, what channel do you think I would use? Facebook. It would be Pinterest. Oh. No, it would be Pinterest, Shoot. right? Because 85% of the people, the demographics on Pinterest, right, are, are female audiences, oh. right? Dang, I now, the think about this. Do you think on Pinterest I could have a vehicle screeching down a quarter mile track at you know 110 miles an hour and get the attention of the Pinterest user? I'd like to know that. Probably not, okay. right? Because- you know, Pinterest at 85% female is more focused about, you know, uh, about safety, about reliability, about the, about the nice, you know, vehicle features of that vehicle, right? Okay. Where on TikTok, you can definitely grab somebody running through a mud pit down a quarter mile all about the vehicle. So <laughs> totally. you have to understand okay. the channel. Okay, great point. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, so yep, that makes it's, sense. It's, it's a, yeah. It's super, it's super cool because it gives us all this ability to really decide, you know, what audience to send what message to at the right time. I feel like everything changes so fast, especially these last two years. I, I, I'm i in the stores quite frequently. And as soon as I step away, like usually this week, I'm not in a store. It's the last week. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me. And is, and I, I'm, a, I'm gone for a week. And when I go back, I feel like I have to play catch up. I'm just wondering, yeah. like, what's your secret sauce for us that you know puts dealers in a competitive advantage amongst all the sharks out there and ps the sharks are back there's yeah you know uh, great question great question <laughs> uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna say this and you could hashtag it if you want okay dirty data doesn't work Ooh. right so at the end of the day okay everything that we should do for for our clients and for our dealer partners to be based on the very best data meaning the most the person most likely to buy or service with them in the next 30 days, right? So when you're using clean data, really accurate data, and I'll give you an example, right? Okay. So, uh, so for example, if I was uh, looking, if I was a dealer and I wanted to speak to everybody driving my brand in the service department that doesn't do business with me today, but drives my brand, you would say, hey, John, hey, Jeff, can you speak to those people, those Conquest people but I don't, I don't want to talk to the people that I already do business with, right? But they have to drive my brand. Okay. They have to be within, you know, 15 miles of my store. Yeah. And they have to have yeah. less than X, Y, or Z model, right? You would want to get the absolute cleanest data you can to serve them up an ad mm. that will motivate them to get off of the couch and either call, click, or come in, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's what we want to do. So, so what, what keeps us fresh, what keeps us relevant, what keeps us quite frankly, helping the dealers and being partners with the dealers is making sure we are not serving their ads up to people who are not going to come in and either buy a vehicle or service a vehicle with them in the next 30 to 45 days. So your secret sauce is clean data. Clean data. Yeah, dirty <laughs> data doesn't work. Hashtag it. Dirty data doesn't work. Dirty data doesn't work. Okay, I like that. Hey listeners, I'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Looking to start the new year on the right foot? Now is the perfect time to connect purchase-ready buyers with your in-demand inventory. The Turnex browser extension powered by LotLinks technology is a free marketing tool designed to accelerate inventory turn. Download the tool today and bring real-time pricing, demand, and competitor insights right to your desktop. Visit lotlinks.com forward slash turn X or download directly from the Chrome and Safari app stores. Plus, first time users can market their first five VINs for free. 
You know, when I was talking to Jeff uh, recently, he mentioned something to me. He's like, as we're talking about the industry and a lot of the things that are changing. And, you know, he's like, dealers need help buying cars. And this is one of the things we've really spent a lot of time on. And uh, to your point, the clean data. Um, and I love that you're, you've given us this example with the service because I can really put that into perspective. I'm trying to go after a market. I'm, I want to serve them up the right ad. I want it to be the right people looking. And anyways, Jeff Clark and I are talking about uh, you know, what's going on in the industry and how tough it is to get inventory. And he mentions a few things that prompted me to have you guys on the episode today. I really wanted to share uh, some some of this, uh, some of these movements you guys have been up to and making. I, w- I want you to tell us a little about, you know, how you are, what you're doing that's so significantly different than we're seeing in the industry right now. I'm looking for a competitive advantage. I'm looking for an edge right now on how to buy used cars. What are you guys doing right now? And I I, I, I know you guys are always emerging and changing because you got to stay on top of all this stuff. Um, but this might be relatively new for you. But I want to have this conversation about out, going out there and finding another way to acquire inventory that's maybe not so traditional. What you yeah, got for us? Re, yeah, remember tip of the spear, right? You know, yes, this yes. entire conversation, this is going to be tip of the spear kind of stuff, right? So we want to lead the way. Luckily for us, we've got Jeff Clark here with us today, right? So I'm going to let Jeff say a few words about vehicle acquisition, right? And then I'll kind of fold in the back. And if there's some more questions about that, when we're done, we'll pick them up at the end. How's that sound? Okay. Yes, I am done. I feel like, hi, Jeff. Hey, how are you? Hi. Oh my God. It's always good to see you. Always good to talk to you. Um, yeah, you know, from our last conversation to Jen, even today, Mm -hmm. it continues to accelerate. You know, the pain point that I feel from a lot of my digital retailing folks, a lot of my, you know, dealers on the ground, they're just struggling to get cars. Yes. They're really fighting to get inventory. And this is no shot at the auctions. This is no, you know, shot at the market. This is really, you got to be smarter. You got to be wiser. How are you going out there and getting inventory? And here's one of the things that we've learned. Uh, we as a company, right, speaking about Social Dealer and some of our sister companies, gone are the days of employees coming into an office, right? Mm -hmm. The vast majority of our employees today are virtual, and it continues to grow. We're finding that our employees are more productive. We're finding that they're happier in their jobs, but we're also finding, you know what? They're not using the cars that they had purchased. Mm-hmm. That they're either paying mm-hmm. taxes, insurance, or car payments on. And we're finding today that more and more couples or families don't need the 2.5 cars they own. And you think, Jeff, how do you have 0.5 cars? But if you think about the average of people, an average family has two and a half to three cars. Do you really need those? There might be one of those vehicles that's disposable. So one of the things that we're trying to do is help our retailers find ways to connect with a for sale by owner. Oh, this Today, makes sense. Jennifer, there is three and a half million cars available uh-huh. for sale every, by owner. Every day. Mm-hmm. Every, every, day. Day. every day. Three and a half million cars. Wow. Yet our retail partners are going to the auctions. Uh-huh. They know they're overpaying. They know they are. The data tells you they're overpaying. They'll tell you they're overpaying, right? So not only are you paying the auction fees, you have a member of leadership or management out of the office. You have transportation fees. You have reconditioning fees. I saw a report the other day on one of the major news channels. The, the average cost of a vehicle today is uh-huh. 39.5% above previous historical records. So you're paying 40% more for a car. Mm-hmm. Can we reduce that? Can we adjust that? Can we curtail that? Can we control that? And I think for social dealer, one of the things that we're looking at is knowing that three and a half million people are looking to sell their car. Love that. Knowing that we can avoid the fees, the transportation. Save some money. How much benefit does that have to our retail dealers? So for, for us, we're partnering with companies like Lot Pop. We're partnering with Mm -hmm. companies like Shop Smart Autos. We're partnering with 
other data companies and players to put the best of that information in real-time retail data in the hands of our dealers to say, hey, let's take your marketing budget. And let's make sure that we've got, to John's point, the right data, mm-hmm. right? No dirty data, clean data. Let's make an informed decision. And let's make sure we're turning those vehicles faster, cleaner, and more profitably that not only benefits the seller, but benefits you, the dealer, and more importantly, benefits the buyer. Because at the end of the day, the market's going to change. You know that, I know that, right? This industry, for as long as we've been in it, right? Even though we're only in our 30s, hint, hint. (laughs) It it will change. It will adjust. It will reform. And we want to be there to help our dealers kind of wear that that badge, right? Kind of weather that storm, if you will. So we see it being the ability of taking data that's readily available, okay. making informed decisions and helping our dealers make the right decisions and hopefully helping not only the people that they're buying cars from, but their consumers have a better experience. No, I love your passion. And I, I, you know, I, I know both of your backgrounds and it's all pro dealer. You're always looking for ways to help them. And I feel that, you know, even in the last class I taught before we jumped on this call, um, I had a hundred uh, different people in there. And yeah, you know, actually, I even yesterday's class, it came up too. I'm hearing salespeople say more frequently than ever, Jen, you'll be shocked at how many people, and this is why we got to outreach to them. This is what, you know, I'm the master prospector over here, hunter mode all day. Like I want, I, I feel like we have to call people. We have to bring in business. And they say to me, Jen, you would be shocked at how many people need to downsize a car. You know, and if we don't call our customer base alone, just to tell them what's going on to just, you know, see if there's something there, you know, this is how we're going to get a lot of cars. And it's like, if you really really think about it. There's thousands and thousands of people. You can't hit them all up. You just can't. There's just no way, you know, so you have to target certain people in the database, you know, like, ooh, a little hunt, a little data mining action over here. But you're hoping that this one person you call is like, you know what? I'm going to get rid of a car. My spouse is working from home now and we don't need this $600 car payment and I want to sell the vehicle to you. Uh, yeah. This is actually happening very frequently now. And, uh, uh, dealers are pumped because they're like, hell yeah, we got another trade. <laughs> but let's be yeah. real. We still need to leverage technology out there to be able to acquire vehicles. And every dealer says it to me. They've been saying it for, I can't, even. I'm going to say at least a year. You know, the auctions are, are t- it's too much, you know, yeah. acquiring, yeah. we're overpaying. Now we're seeing vehicles sit on dealers lots a little longer than we have seen in the last year. Um, so now we're starting to get focused on best ways, innovative ways, that's what I'm looking for, innovative ways to acquire vehicles. So tell me about how you guys are staying competitive in your own space and helping dealers acquire vehicles. I'm looking for something clever. Yeah. You you know, um, you know, Jennifer, you you know me and my background, I'm a hunter by nature, right? (laughs) Um, I, 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 every dealer I know is a hunter, right? I don't, I don't know a single gatherer dealer out there. Like we are hunters. No. Yeah. It's what we do, right? We have to go find cars. Yeah. We have to go find and customers. We have to, right. We have to, that's how it works. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, this ain't no social nonprofit. Dealer, exactly. This ain't no nonprofit. <laughs> we're not a 5013C, right? Like that's not what we're doing here. Right. Right. So at the end of the day, we have to go find people that want to come buy our vehicles or service with us, right? Mm-hmm. We need to sell and service mm-hmm. more vehicles profitably. And I you want to do it in a way that's cost AI effective. Guy. Sorry to mean to cut exactly. you off. Exactly. Yeah. Well, right. profitably has to be. So, to- so anybody who says, Mr. Deal, I'm going to help you sell and service more vehicles, and they don't say and profitably, yep. that's a one-sided equation, Yeah. right? I want you to sell and service more vehicles profitably, yeah. right? So that's got to be so. So hunter mentality, social dealer was built on hunter mentality. It will always run on hunter mentality to help our dealer partners out, right? So some easy ways, some easy things, right? Everybody's looking to buy pre-owned vehicles, right? We've got vehicles yes. in our database that are coming due to term on e- either a, a finance position or a lease position. Okay, we should be going after those. I think we all can agree we should be touching those people. I don't think there's anybody on this audience that would say, no, John, that's a bad idea. That's mm-hmm. a, that's a solid idea. 
So they're in my database. They bought a car from me before. They're, they've been in the vehicle for you know 24 months or 30 months, whatever the case may be. We feel they're in a position of equity. Let's get them out and back into another vehicle. Totally. Super simple, right? Yep. The next way is to drive traffic through the people that are already selling their cars. Yes. They're trying to sell their cars online. Listen, Facebook Marketplace Didn't Jeff just say 3.5 million? 3.5 million How a do you day. get to all these people? Right? So, yeah. so technology, technology, right? So, but you start with the data. Okay. Um, this is not going to be earth shattering, but, but I got to say it. You have to start with the data. So, you know, you start with your top trades. You then move on to your top used seller report, right? Mm -hmm. You grab two reports, just two reports, your top trade report and your top seller report. And you match that up with the people selling the exact same vehicles or close to them on say for a Facebook marketplace or offer up. So if I'm a Ford or a Chevy or a Dodge store, listen, go after your top trades, your top used yes. sellers. Don't, don't, don't say, John, I want everybody within 20 miles of my store selling their car on Facebook marketplace. No, listen, let's, let's agree not to do that today. That's right? limited, listen, but go. that that's okay. So that's what everyone's doing right now. Yeah. Now yeah. we, now well, what if that car sits on your lot up. for, but what if it sits on your lot for like six months? Right. And was that a good business decision? And it's not even that. It's that if even if dealers are all going on Facebook Marketplace, um, you know, to, to, to acquire vehicles, everyone's going after those customers. I mean, it's exactly. like, you know, and, and these are the people that are in your backyard. OK, so now you're like, yeah. OK, Jen, we got to expand the thinking. It can't just be in our backyard. Correct. Yeah. And you got to pick out your battleground zip codes, like what you want to win. So certainly when your backyard. Right. And when that zip go between you and somebody else. But at the end of the day, you. Use the data you have in your arsenal to your favor, right? If you know that you could turn a 2010 X, Y, or Z in five days and put and, and put three, four, five G on the books, uh -huh. that's what uh -huh. you want more of, yeah. right? Don't, yes. don't go with your gut and say, well, you know, I think we can get X for this car and somebody's going to buy it. No, no, no. Let's forget that. Let's go with the ones that we have the most prevalence to sell the quickest, for the most gross. And let's find more of them, but let's not do this. Let's not sit there on, on messenger and, and try to message these people all day long that don't want to buy their car. Why don't we actually send a, 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 a Facebook ad, serve a Facebook ad up to them that they're, they're on social media for three, four hours a day. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of a sudden it says, Hey, you know, this particular dealership wants to buy your vehicle for X, Y, or Z, right? Let's get them a message on social media where they spend three to four hours a day on and make sure that they know that this particular store can buy that vehicle. Because Jen, think about this. Short of a car dealership, short of a car dealership, who can buy your 50,000 ride for cash today? Who? Not many people got 50 grand in the bank, right? I got to go to the credit sure. union. I got to get a check. I got to get a certified check. Yeah. No, you can just take it to the dealership. Yeah. And by the way, they'll give, they'll, give you, they'll give you a check right here and there, right? Yeah. So that's the point we're trying to make here is, only try to serve your ads up to the people most likely to do business with you today so that you can then turn them around, recon it, get to the front line mm -hmm. and sell that car again, right? And that's the whole goal here. The second or the third way to do that, Jennifer, is this. Get more people visiting conquesters, right? VIOs, get more conquesting people driving vehicles in your service department to get the sales department, get the front end to touch, their, touch that vehicle, and make a decision if they want to buy it. And if they can buy it, great. Let's buy it out right now while it's in the service drive and get it through recon to the front line. Uh -huh. Or if we decide not to buy it, let's send it through the shop and make some money on the back end as well. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of great ways to do it, but we have to kind of un unwire our brain and rewire our brain to really going after the most likely person to sell us their car today on a media, by the way, where they spend three or four hours a day. That's a lot of time. So, so, okay. Try to help me break this down a little bit. So a lot of the dealers that I work with, they are, you know, on Facebook marketplace, they're, they're on Craigslist offer up and they're generally staying in their market. Maybe they can venture out, but you couldn't possibly get to 3 million listings, you know? So you're saying that you're able to go out there and tighten up the data to acquire just the vehicles they're looking for, the ones they know they're going to make money on. It doesn't have to be in their backyard. You know, I think uh, uh, people like Carvana, you know, uh, even 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 um, 
uh, CarMax, they're acquiring vehicles way outside the market. So, yep. I, and I think that's how they're getting it too, right? So you're saying, okay, I'm like, all right, I, I don't want to, I don't want just any vehicle. I'm looking for a 2010 F-150. I'm looking for a 2020 F uh, Explorer. And I'm going to, I only want to condense it to Jesse's vehicles. And not only can I contact that list of people, but I could serve up an ad or is it just an ad? Yeah, exactly. You know, and so, so think about that, right? So if you're in the Northeast or a, or, or a snow prone state, you don't, you're not looking for the convertible right now, no. right? You're not looking for the rear wheel drive car right now. And quite frankly, there's those vehicles on, on, on all those channels today trying to sell. Yeah. So would you want your BDC, quote unquote, spinning their wheels on vehicles no. like that because he happens to like the rear wheel drive Corvette? No, because as, as a dealer, I can't move that one quick enough. Talk to me in the spring. I can move that car in the spring all through the summer, but by August, that car has got to go, mm-hmm. right? So we have to be really prudent with who we want to talk to mm-hmm. and make sure that, A, it's the right vehicle, yep. right? It's the right price. Mm-hmm. I know I can move that thing quickly okay. and get it okay. in and get it out because uh-huh. that's the key. Uh-huh. That's where dirty data doesn't work, got right? It, dirty it. data... Just because I'm selling a car doesn't mean I want to buy it, right? Yeah. Regardless of what anybody will tell you, at the end of the day, I've got to move that car to make some money, Yeah. right? Let's not get attached to the car. Let's make sure that we've got the right number on it and make sure we have enough of them and get them over the curb and burning gas. Mm -hmm. Jeff, you had a comment. Did you want to make a comment about that? You know, I I did. And Jen, I thought that was a wonderful question. And, you know, as as I look at navigating the company through... 2020 and 2021, um, as a business operator, I got to tell you, it's been brutal. Mm -hmm. COVID has dealt a blow. um, And I don't want to put the industry challenges on COVID shoulders, but it's affected inventory. It's affected used cars. It's affected a lot of things in how dealerships operate. Yes. But I think the thing that we haven't adjusted to as an industry is the real data like the real data, we think we know, and, and this is no knock on used car managers, but used car managers buy cars they like, they buy cars they have experience with, they buy cars that, hey, I sold this car and I made a lot of money, right? What's the data say? What does the data actually reveal? And a great mentor and friend of mine once said to me, my data trumps your feelings. Uh-huh. So as an industry, we got to we gotta stop with the egos. We got to leave those things at the door. And we got to look at and saying, look, I know because new car inventory is short, I'm going to overpay for use. Right. I know that. I know that. But how long am I going to keep the car? And then more importantly, when it hits 30 days, what's my reaction? Mm-hmm. Because the typical reaction with the dealer is when it hits 30 days, if I haven't sold it, what do I do? Lower the price. I lower the price, right? Yep. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that the smartest thing to do? That wasn't the deal on the way in. That probably wasn't what you were thinking about when you bought the car. Mm-hmm. But yet, we're 30 days later. So guess what? Just like the stock market, things have changed. So let's go back and look at, well, if we've only allocated $50 or $100 to selling this car, Instead of discounting at 500, what if we put another 150 to selling it? Now we're out 250. Oh, wait a minute. I'm no genius, but I'm 250 ahead of the game. Right? We're we're quick to react and we're quick to take behaviors that are preconditioned in us. And I think one of the things Social Dealer and its partners have figured out, slow down. Stop doing things the old way. This isn't the 1980s not the 1990s. You don't have to automatically hit 30 days and deduct $500. Yeah. The mustache while making a comeback still isn't cool, right? There are things that you need to think about when you make educated decisions about your dealership. What if I can spend two, two and a half, three times per unit sold that I would have spent versus what I'm going to discount it? So as John and I look at the business and as we work with good partners like you and the things that you do to help dealerships improve how they sell and connect with consumers. We're asking the million dollar question, do I need to do that to sell the product? Just because there's 10 minutes left before the sale's over 
doesn't mean we need to drop the price. Maybe it means we just need to talk to more people on more channels in different ways to make sure that the value that we put into this vehicle, which penciled and made sense when we bought it, still makes sense 30, 31, 60, 61 days later. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Listen, I, I, you know, my retail days, Jennifer, I, I bought vehicles that I thought I could roll in two weeks. And 60 days later, those boys are still sitting there. And I'm like, I need to get rid of this. And then the snow's coming in. I got, at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. we need to make decisions based on really good data, right? And I think Jeff has a valid point. Listen, if we haven't gotten the traction on this particular vehicle to move it today, well, then let's expand our audience. Let's make sure the audience is right, first of all, right? And the great thing about social is you have almost unlimited audiences, right? I mean, there's so many, so much data out there today that you could utilize to put that vehicle in front of their news feed right. that could help move. And, and that's the key, right? So it's just not one road. This is how we started this conversation. <laughs> it's not one highway. Like there are like 10 highways running parallel to the end goal, which is to sell that car. We just have to make sure we have you on the right highway with the right data, with the right consumer, with the right message, yeah. then get them to motivate themselves to actually respond to you and say, Hey, tell me more about that vehicle. No, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, you added a whole other arm here. So it's not just buying vehicles, it's selling vehicles too, but it comes back to compiling the right data. So you're serving up ads to the right people, um, to acquire vehicles or to move a vehicle. Um, I found it really interesting, the concept of being able to expand the thinking of what exactly, you know, is selling in your market, because there can be these certain trucks in particular, SUVs in particular, that people really are dying to get their hands on. They're hard to get. But with that many vehicles out there in the marketplace, you can locate them and um, and be able to compile, you know, the data that says, OK, this is a person that's listing their car for a reasonable price. I know what it's going to take to put into it. OK, you know, let's target this person. And right. and then I can show them something. And then I'm, I'm guessing there has to be more to it because, um, I mean, you have their you have their their information. You have their email address. You could send them a. You could blast out an email to people um, and make an offer. Or I'm guessing you have like their cell number. You could send them a text. That's what we're doing in our sales process. Yeah. I'm always like, text yeah. them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, think about this, right? right? So when you Am created right? your Facebook, yeah, when when you created your Facebook page, Jennifer, you probably put your best email address down, exactly, right? and you put your best cell phone. Well, your only cell phone down, probably, yeah, because that's the way we have to reset our password when we forget get it right it's not it's it's not rocket scientists here like listen i need you to call me or send me a message on this phone at this email address because i'm going to forget my password mm-hmm. so let's just be honest that's what it is so facebook probably has your best email and your best password mm-hmm. yes there are times where people created their very first email and they haven't changed it since but for for most people they want to keep that accurate because i'm not going to remember my password and yeah. i'm going to ask you to reset it at some point so I need to ever try to change your phone out at the op, Apple store. And the first thing they say is, yep. hey, Jennifer, do you remember your Apple ID password? You're like, oh, Come like, on. like all this, all this like sweat starts to happen. <laughs> like, I don't know my, my Apple ID password, right? I literally, my phone broke on the way to do the podcast and I called Apple and they said, <laughs> John, we're going to send you a, a, an email. Do you know your Apple ID password? Yeah. I was like, uh, like, I was like, I'm driving. I don't know if I could find it. Right. So Think about it. The social channels have the best way to get a hold of us. So could you use that data yeah. in other areas? Could you use the data of not only their email and their phone number and their name, but could you also use information like the vehicle they're driving, your make and model, right? Could you use that information to your benefit to then <laughs> create a custom campaign and send Jennifer Suzuki an email that says, hey, by the way, I know you're driving an XYZ. I think it's now time to trade out of that into this next vehicle, right? Because you have that data. When you have the data, you can make really logical decisions on what you have, right? And, and I think Jeff said it best. Let's not use, you know, my gut tells me or my, or, or this is what my gut tells me to, to sell or to, or to buy. Yeah. Let's use the data that we have. If anybody says, I can help you sell more cars or help you, sorry, help you buy more cars. Mm-hmm. And they haven't asked you the one or two very important questions. Let's hear it. What's your top trades? Okay. And what are your top used sellers, right? If you think about it, if I'm a, if I'm a Chevy store, do I care about a Lamborghini, Ferrari or Maserati Bentley? No, 
I, let's not talk to those people. I know I'm never going to trade them in I don't and want get those rid of anyway. them anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But if I know, if I know that these are my top trades, yes. Right. And my top used car sellers, mm-hmm. then why wouldn't we go after more of the, by the way, either volume or gross, right? Yep. Listen, car guy in me tells me volume or gross, right? John, do you want volume or gross? Jennifer, I want both just so you know. Yeah. Right. Course. I don't know, but dealer today that will never tell me both. <laughs> right. I want volume and I want gross. So let's go after the ones we can sell the most of yeah. and make the most money with. It's, it's not, it's not as difficult as we think. Okay. All right. I get it. You know, it's yeah. um, get the right data, get the right buyers and sellers out there, hit it on social and yeah. um, serve them up ads. And not only that, but you've got that list of data that you can uh, stack onto that ad. And it could be maybe other messaging that you're sending out there. You know, yeah. I mean, you could send them a text, right? All day long. Okay. Listen, I've got I their mean, cell that's, phone. That's, that's what a- works. I've got their email, right? That's, so, or, or, or you could tie it to your chat. Me. I bet you, could you tie right. it to their chat? Sure. You Why can, not? Why not? You know, Chad, not only can you tie it to their chat, one of the things that we as an organization do, um, and this isn't a sales pitch, this is just for your audience. Let's hear it. Um, I, you know, I, I was sharing this with someone the other day. When's the last time you were at the doctor's office? Was it in the last few months, six months, a year? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I have three girls, you know, in the COVID. Okay, and, yeah. okay. But, 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 <laughs> it's but always for something. you, but, but for you personally, when's the last time you were at the doctor's office? Oh, it's been a long time. I'm very healthy. Okay. <laughs> so, so, and while that's great, as a prior military guy, I have to go every year. Okay. In yeah. order to keep hey, my health insurance right. and my, you know, my uh, life insurance where it is. <laughs> And there's always that, what they call, quote unquote, intake form, right? And that intake form always asks a lot of questions. And some of which I don't know that most of us are honest with, right? Because it'll say, do you smoke? If so, how much? Do you drink? If so, how much, right? Um, Those are a couple of questions on the form that historically people don't respond to Honestly, <laughs> right? Well, but what's funny I can admit is, that that's happened to me. <laughs> right? Well, we all can if we think drink about socially, it. Drink socially, barely drink, we all can, drinks every day. Right? I'm like, hmm, which one do they want to hear? But when they say, well, how many drinks? Uh, well, define a drink. Is that right? Cup? <laughs> right? <laughs> what size cup? Uh, so uh, I think my point is, is you can fit the narrative to your needs. But the interesting thing about seeing the doctor and when the doctor puts you through the physical, you really can't hide, right? Because the blood work in the labs is the blood work in the labs. It's going to tell the truth, right? And I think what we look at when we look at dealerships and we look at business, I don't care what you tell me. You can tell me these are your grosses, these are your sales, this is your performance. That's an ego thing, right? Or that's a belief that no one's going to know. And of course, I'm not going to know. I don't work in the manufacturer. I don't know whether or not what you're telling me is true or not, but you're going to know. But what's always amazing to me is when you show back up the doctor's office and the doctor says, well, (laughs) things aren't quite matching up to what you told us. And this is what we're seeing, right? Okay. Yep. That's kind of how we as a company operate. So one of the things we offer all of our clients is what we call a social media health check. So if you go to Mm -hmm. Mm socialdealer.com and you follow the various tabs of navigation, you'll see something that's called the social media health check. That is, in fact, your intake form. So you can tell me whatever you want to tell me, but what I really need to know is who you are and who your number one competitor is. Because when I'm done, I'm going to be able to tell you whether your cholesterol is high or low, right? Whether or not your salt intake is off, whether or not you have other issues. Because now I've seen all your different social channels. Are they set up properly? Are they configured properly? Have you done the right things? So again, you can tell me what you want to tell me. You can tell the manufacturer what you want to tell the manufacturer. Because in the automotive world today, 
today, the OEMs like to see the check the box solution. And that's how a lot of dealers operate. Mm. Well, you can check the box with me all you want. But at the end of the day, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I know because I can see your channels. I can see if they're optimized. I can see your posting cadence. I can see if you're meeting best practices. I can see if you're not. So I think one of the things that I hope the audience listening today, because of all that you do and how you better the industry, think about, I can tell myself whatever I want to tell myself, but at the end of the day, have I configured it and set it up the right way? Because while I might be great and utilize Jennifer's phone skills and sales skills and other skills, if I don't have my channel set up properly, I'm not performing and I'm not succeeding. Yeah, I, I, so our listeners could probably just navigate their way on over to socialdealer.com and do a little quick assessment and see where they stand. I, you know, I like that because oftentimes we don't know where we really stand. And I certainly don't know unless I go to the doctor and get the report. Uh, you think it's one thing, but it could be a whole nother because everything is evolving so fast in the industry. You know, where are we supposed to be? You know, are we doing enough? You know, do we need to make a few adjustments over here and then over here? Business has been so good for dealers lately that sometimes we let our guard down. And if there's one thing I've noticed in the industry, it's that people let their guard down right now. Even salespeople, they're like, ah, I'm going to sell a car anyway. And now um, is the time to not let your guard down. Now is the time to hone your skills. Yes. Right. Become experts. Tip of the spear stuff. uh, Because I'm telling you, when we come out the other (laughs) side of this, it is going to be mass crazy chaos, right? Yeah. By the way, car dealers love chaos. I love chaos. But at yeah. the end of the day, right now, it's a little bit lull in the fire. You know right? what? They like we to be, be competitors too. You know, we're yeah. all in a hunt. We're all in the shark yeah. tank together. And everyone that yeah. has that one little arm up, you know, that's what we're trying to get after. That That's what yeah. we're talking about today, guys. That's yeah. the listeners. Look, I listen, wanted them to I, come I on you, so you could hear this. I will tell you this, Jennifer. You know, somebody a long time have told me, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. Right. And the, and that social health check, it tells you everything that you thought you knew that you don't know. Not because I went to the doctor yesterday, Jeff, but thanks for bringing that up. But, um, but for my annual, which is always a lot of fun, but (laughs) um, yeah. Uh, But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, the health check just says, here's about 45 pages of every channel you own, Mr. and Mrs. Dealer. Good, bad, or ugly, our our Facebook community certified people went through and said, with not a sales bone in their body, said, here's what we found. Benchmarked it against against the best practices and said, it says, here you go, Mm -hmm. right? Whether you use social dealer or not, we would love to have you on board. But at the end of the day, if you decided to take this on your own and try to figure it out, at least you've got a roadmap. Uh Uh-huh. Well, thank you for that. You know- There's so much in everything that you gave us here today. And I want to just remind the audience that I wanted these guys to come on and share this little secret sauce moment with you about how to acquire vehicles in a way that, you know, they say less than 2% of dealers are doing stuff like this. And as soon as I hear stuff like that, I'm like, that's something I want on my show because we want this show to be about staying relevant and have a competitive advantage for anyone that's listening. And so acquiring vehicles in a different mindset uh, is one thing. And then they gave us another thing. They were like, yeah, but (laughs) we can use that same methodology to acquire customers and um, you've given us a few, few things to, to chew on and think about. And I really appreciate you guys dropping these knowledge bombs on us. I feel like there's so many dealers out there and they do want to try something new. You know, these are our progressive dealers. They tend to be the ones I work with. They want something new. They're willing to try something. They want to just see what's going to happen. And that is what we're talking about today. This isn't just for like basic people. All things extra, extra, where you at? <laughs> this sounds like it's right up there, Allie. Um, so maybe you guys could give our listeners your contact info or like point us in the right direction. I didn't want yeah. this to be a sales pitch and I hope that the listeners didn't feel it was that way. I felt like there's some secret sauce in here. Go check it out. Yeah. yeah thanks, Jennifer. Listen, there is no sales pitch here, right? There's no shame in any of this, right? My goal, you know, after 30 years, 25, I, I have to check one day. It's between 25 and 30 years. I don't want to date myself <laughs> in the car business, right? My goal is to help car mystery. dealers sell and service more cars yes. profitably. Anybody who talks to me knows that whether you decide to to partner with social dealer or not 
that is secondary in my world, right? If I can help you grow your business and you could grow it and be better as a dealer in your community, I'm all for it, right? But if you want to talk to social dealer, you want to talk to Jeff, you want to talk to I, the best way to do it is go to socialdealer.com, right? You can go there. You can fill out the, you know, the, the health check form. It's a couple of questions long. You fill it out. The team does it. It comes back, right? You've got a good understanding. If you want to talk to Jeff or I directly, you can probably reach us at uh, j.mcadams at socialdealer.com or Jeff, which is Jeff uh, j.clark at socialdealer.com, right? Um, and give us, a, give us a, a quick email. Let us know how we can help you out. At the end of the day, listen, social media is changing the landscape of the environment for the automotive industry. Um, we believe it's for the better, right? We believe that it's the cutting edge. It's, a, it's really the tip of the spear. Um, and if we could help you out in any way, you know, at all, just let us know. We'd love to do it. All right. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, <laughs> um, yeah. Jeff, for coming on today and sharing your time with us. And I'll put their contact info in the description too. Awesome. Jennifer, thank you. And to your audience, um, if there's, again, to John's point, if there's anything we can do, there is no obligation. As a matter of fact, we even encourage some of the reports that we do to be provided back to their current suppliers. Um, so whether it's their ad agency or a separate company, uh, again, it's it's less about what you're doing wrong and more about what you're doing well, but maybe what you can be better at. Ooh, okay, here's to that. Jen, thank you so much. Great seeing you. Thanks, guys. So if you're liking these episodes where I'm sharing sales techniques with you, I actually have some more resources where you can gain some more content to help you really improve your sales approach. All right, so you can go to two places. One, you can hit up our company, edealersolution.com. There are videos, there are training tools, just go check it out. And secondly, you can go to my blog, jennifersuzuki.com. I am publishing lots of information on a weekly basis, but do not forget to follow me on social, FBIG. Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those. And uh, I'm posting every single week on those channels too. Once again, this is Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki and I'll see you next time.